everybody welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome so today is so exciting because it's the ugly duckling challenge now Corey from desert diy organized this entire sort of contest i guess you would say challenge and the rules were only that we find the most ugliest piece that we could find now i found it so difficult to find an ugly piece i searched and searched i did find one eventually and it had etched glass doors on it. It was very out of date and needed a makeover. So I picked this one. You will see it in two seconds. I cannot wait to show you what I did. And not only did I make one piece out of this, I made two. So check it out, enjoy this video, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have fun watching, because it's a good one. So here is the piece that I had picked. I found it really difficult to find an ugly piece. I did find a few, but it was odd enough somebody had already grabbed them. But I think this was pretty ugly. It was definitely outdated and really needed a makeover, especially with the handles and that gold material inside. So I got started and I first took out the glass panels because I will not be needing those. I then took out the hardware because I knew I wanted to update them into something a bit more modern, but I did keep them and put them aside. Now, the middle part here where the opening is had this gold fabric paper. It was really weird, very sticky, and it was attached to all the side panels, the back and the bottom. Now, I did need to still keep those panels, so I took the paper off. Here's a better look at what it looks like. So I took those panels off, but the side had a gap, so I definitely needed to keep them. And same with the bottom, as you can see here. So once I had those out, I filled the holes in where the old hardware was because I, like I said, wanted to update them. So usually once you filled in the holes like this, you have to go over it again just to make sure you don't have any feeling of the little edges there. So I took the back off while that was drying and it was just attached with staples and I was able to take this paper off pretty easy but it was so sticky as you can see here. The glue was really gross. But once I got that paper off the back, what I did was sanded it all down with 80 grit sandpaper and it came off right away. Usually I would use glue gone but I didn't have any so the sanding worked even better. Now I had filled in some holes that were in the side panels and once it was all dried, I sanded it down with my orbital sander. I had had very little room here, so I was trying to show you exactly what I was doing, but you can see that I am sanding off the wood filler. Once I had done that, I decided to go over the entire piece with my orbital sander, and I think this was 220 disc grit on my sander, just to go over the entire piece to scuff sand it. Now laminate, this is laminate, and laminate smells when you're sanding it. So once the entire piece was done, as you can see here, I put the bottom panel back down because I didn't want the paint to go into the drawers because it was all open underneath. So I sprayed the entire piece with crud cutter and gave it a really good clean. I then wrapped the legs at the bottom because I was definitely keeping these really cool retro legs and covered the bottoms with tape so that I didn't get any paint or primer on them. Once I had done that, I then sprayed the entire piece because I knew it was going to have bleed through with my favorite spray Kills brand. Now Kills brand has several sprays that you can get. This one's a bit more fumier but they also have one that doesn't have a, a smell to it. So I also sprayed the in inside as well because I knew where the wood was, the MDF panels, they, it would bleed through. So it basically looks like this, and it's okay that it doesn't have complete coverage because like all my videos, I always spray afterwards with Zinsser Bin 123 primer. I also sprayed the legs with a Rust-Oleum spray, as you saw there. 
And then I went over it with the Zinsser Bin 123 with my Wagner sprayer. This is the gray primer and it has really good coverage and because I'm using the color Tide Pool which is a blue, I wanted to use the gray so that I had the coverage needed with that color. Make sure when you're spraying an inside closed area like this little cupboard that you're wearing safety glasses. I had obviously forgotten to put my glasses on, but usually I do because you don't want the spray spraying back into your eyes. This one seems a bit more open, so it was okay. So I sprayed the top with the Zinsser Primer, making sure it had really good coverage over that kill spray. And I did about two coats of this primer. I really am liking the gray primer lately and I seem to be using it quite a lot. And you can also get it in gallons at Lowe's. So once I had gotten the gray primer on, I sanded in between coats like I always do with 400 grit sandpaper. And I wanted to create a really cool design. So I started to tape off some long triangles and just figuring out what look I wanted. Because I wanted to do several colors on this piece. So once I had gotten the design that I wanted, I taped around the edge and then I used one of those panels that I wasn't using to spray inside the cupboard. So both of the open areas I wanted in an off-white color and this is called Crinoline by Country Chic Paint. So I sprayed both open areas in that color and then taped off as you can see here so that I wouldn't get any blue paint inside. I then used that panel again just to hold it up underneath so that the overspray wouldn't go anywhere near the open areas. And then I started to spray this beautiful new color by Country Chic Paint called Tide Pool. It's a really pretty bright blue. And I used my Wagner sprayer to spray this paint on. So I had gotten about three coats of the blue on, which looked amazing, and now it was time to roll on the colors that I wanted for these uh, for this design that I did. So I'm using Pea Coat, which is a really dark navy blue on the one, on the bottom one, as you can see here. And then I was going to use the... Okay, so I rolled that navy blue onto those stripes as you can see here i guess not stripes but more triangles and then i rolled on the crinoline which is a sort of off white and i don't usually use a roller but i guess for things like this it seemed like the perfect way to do it and also it gave more of a smooth finish as well so that turned out really nice so here is what it looks like so far now I did have to cover up another coat of the white and the blue. Something was happening with the blue. It was creating a little bit of texture and I started to sort of like the texture. So I went with it. So the blue part does have a bit of texture to it and it turned out really, really pretty. So I also made a mistake that I had to put a bit more of the blue on the tape. So I had to put the tape back up and redo it. Then it was time to top coat, so I used Country Chic Paint Clear Coat on the entire piece and sprayed inside here a couple of coats so that it was really durable.
Also on the design, I left the primer as the gray and this is what it looks like. I think this turned out absolutely amazing. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. It sort of reminds me of that children's show, The Jetsons. It just looks so retro and mid-century modern, all, all in one piece. And I lined the um, bottom part there with just a peel and stick paper and it just matched perfectly. Same within the drawers as well. It just, I love this piece. It's so much fun. And I think it looks completely different from the original Ugly Duckling piece that I had picked. So now here's the second piece that I did. It was the top of the cabinet. And so we needed to create a base and I also had to trim the backing off. So once the backing was trimmed off, I measured the bottom to make sure that I got the right measurements for the bottom piece. Now this bottom piece isn't brand new wood, it's a piece that came off another dresser and we kept it just in case we ever needed it, which we do now. So I measured where I wanted or how long the bottom was, marked it, and then measured the width and length and then we could cut it, cut that part off. So once that part was cut, we used this chalk string to measure out a straight line so that we could cut that part as well because it wasn't as wide as that. And this thing is really cool. So you just flick it like that and like ping it and then it leaves a chalk line. So then we cut that entire piece off as well and also the ends of the trims. Once that I did that, once we did that, that was set aside and I sanded the entire piece to scuff sand. And again, laminate really smells when you're sanding, sort of gross. So Mr. Lovely helped me out with the router again and just routed the edges to create a really nice, smooth, curved sort of edge for the bottom so that it looked nice. And I'm still learning how to use the router, but he did this one for me. So because this piece for the bottom was MDF, it doesn't have the nicest edge. So I used a cloth to run DAP wood filler all the way around the edge and it came out really nice. This was my first time using the actual wood filler from DAP and it came out very smooth and sanded really smooth as well. So here I am just sanding those edges and it just came off really nicely. So I also moved on to the backing. The backing, I wanted some textured wallpaper. The textured wallpaper I got at Lowe's, you can get different designs, I'll put it in my description. I used Extra Strength Mod Podge to stick it on. Once it was stuck on, I painted it this beautiful, very bright new color from Country Chic Paint called Raspberry Sorbet. Once I had brushed that entire backing in the pink, I let that dry and then I put the piece, the entire shelf onto the bottom of the base that I made, sprayed it with my favorite kill spray again, and then I sanded it with 400 grit sandpaper, which I always use for sanding in between primer coats. And then I use 600 grit sandpaper or a thousand for the paint and top coat. So here I am just spraying on this pink. It is very bright, but it is really pretty. I really liked this color as I was spraying it. So then I thought, what can I do to the sides just to give it that extra character? And I thought I am gonna do it a zigzag design, which I think is really popular. Then we screwed on the legs like this. I had also sprayed them in Rust-Oleum spray and here's what it looks like so this is the top of the cabinet isn't this so cool i love it i think it turned out so fun such a cool piece and i'm just loving that color 
absolutely amazing and this was such a fun project and challenge to do. So here's a last quick look of what it looked like. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that video. It was so much fun, and I think that my two pieces afterwards turned out very dramatic. Um, I was also showing off Country Chic Paints brand new colors, Tide Pool and Raspberry Sorbet, which were bright, fun colors, especially for this challenge. I think it worked out really well. And thanks again to Corey at D Desert DIY for organizing this entire challenge because it's been so much fun. I will put this video, well, it will be in the playlist. I will put the playlist in my description so that you can check out everybody who was involved in this challenge and you can check out all of their ugly duckling pieces and see what you think. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I am really excited to hear what your views are and what you think of it. So thanks again for watching. Like this video and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Have a good day, everybody. Mm -hmm.